Okay, okay, welcome back to another episode of A Dose of Reality. If you're new here, I'm Nefertat, this is a Mackle. Greetings, I'm a Mackle. Yeah. I mean, you said that, you did, you did say that, I didn't need to say that. Let's yeah, move on, did. let's move fast. <laughs> let's, let's move through this. Let's move through it. Let's jump straight into this episode. Today, we'll be continuing from the theme of last week, so talking about creation. So if you haven't already, pause this video and go and watch last week's episode. It was a creation Q&A. And yeah, now you're back. Oh, they're back? You're back. You saw that episode, you loved it. And now you're back. You're like, I need to know more about creation, <laughs> what they're about to come with next. Mm. So I want to delve into a particular topic we covered within last week's episode. So there was a question about creation versus evolution. Mm. So within that, you really clarified that creation and evolution tie in with each other. Creation is a process of growth. And even if you trace back the meaning of the word, you'll see that. So they go hand in hand. So that was cleared up. But I want to get more into the evolution side of things. Mm. How... What is the true story behind evolution? How did plant life, animal life onto us come to be? Because there are a few misconceptions surrounding that. Indeed, indeed. No, it's a very good question in terms of how life came to be on the planet today. I mean, there are different forms of life mm -hmm. would be the first thing I, I would say, which means there are different pathways, if you like, or different branches of this. So in a similar way, we when I spoke of creation, I spoke of the fact that you have these different universes that form or these different suns that are grown or these different galaxies or solar systems or planets that are grown or created um, throughout existence. It's similar to when we come to this planet on Earth, we have different forms of life, if you like, that are created or grown. And, and there may be different moments or different sparks for these creations. It's not to say there's just one moment from which all life that we see on the planet came from. There will be different moments, if you like. Um, the first point I would make before we go into how life grew on the planet is that when we're doing, you, you mentioned animal life, plant life, humanoid life, right? Especially when it comes to human life. One thing that's widely, widely acknowledged now is that life started in Africa. That's an actual fact, so we know this. But what must also be acknowledged is that along the way, there are changes if you like or interceptions if you like which account for the variety of life that we see on the planet especially when you're talking about human life mm -hmm. if that makes sense because we've seen different types of humans manifest and to assume that they all have the exact same story would be incorrect often i hear it told life started in africa 100 percent true then we spread throughout the globe again 100 percent true and then just because of environment we changed and these different races just evolved. And what that story is missing, there's a big gap there, is that you had beings from outside the planet, extraterrestrials. These beings came down and whether it's they seeded, they grafted or they mixed their genes with humanoids on the planet, it is these interceptions that account for the different races or the different human species that we see on the planet today. And that's an important part of the picture, if that makes sense, because that is what accounts for the not only the difference in skin tone, but the difference in uh, features, mentality, spiritual practices, blood, especially when talking about RH positive and RH negative blood. Mm -hmm. This is what accounts for these differences, that you have these different beings that came from outside the atmosphere and mixed or intermingled or done their own, performed their own projects or experiments in order to create these different races that have manifested, if that makes sense. And and a, a manifestation of that in terms of human life is the different cultures and or religions that we see throughout the world who all give reverence or respect or praise or worship to a different set of beings or being, if they interpret it as such, if that makes sense. And these different beings that they're given reference to are extraterrestrials or beings from outside the planet who came and and took part in their own creation stories, if that makes sense. So perhaps we can get onto that in a moment, but it's important to make that point. Very important. Yeah. Very important, clears up a lot 
to yeah. be honest. A lot of what we were told growing up, it just didn't quite connect the evolution story we're given growing up. Yeah. That was just that environment. And yeah, that changed things. Changed things. No, no, there are important differences, which is why you see such differences. And it's important when you do that to think of the origin of races, because the fact that we're so intermingled now and have mixed, whether by choice or forcefully, means we sometimes forget the differences by way of the fact that we're closer in the way we behave right now because we have mixed with each other. But if you go back to the origin of us as, as a people, the origin of other races, or if you go back to certain tribes who haven't mixed, you will see that the practices, the behavior is very different. And this is because they, they have different beginnings, so to speak, even though we can trace all human life correctly back to Africa, we must acknowledge there are interceptions, important interceptions, which mean that we differ especially from certain groups on the planet, if that makes sense. So um, certain races are more distant from us. That's why we start talking about, we speak about all other humanoids being our children. Some of them are our grandchildren. Some of them are might sort of great grand, sort of great, great, just kind of push them down, <laughs> depending on how they behave, if that makes sense. So that's important to acknowledge. Maybe we can go into that a little bit more. But in terms of the question, in terms of how life came to be on this planet, if we continue with from the point um, in the last episode, and, and I've done it previously, we spoke about how Earth was formed, right? And I explained that early Earth was burning, having been ignited by the sun, if that makes sense. And that burning went to the center of the orb to eventually become the central sun. And the chemicals in that central point, once they mixed with the water, created uh, chemical reactions, which caused explosions, sending pieces of matter, some flying out the atmosphere, some landing back down at different points on the orb to become your high places, your mountains, etc. But these explosions creating gaps, caves, caverns beneath the surface of the planet, which account for whether it's just your caves or your waterfalls, or account for spaces beneath the surface which of which beings could come and make their own homes mm -hmm. and live beneath the surface. And, and whether we'll go into it today or not, that's relevant because some of the beings that lived beneath the surface have a relation to some of the humanoids that, we, that we've seen on, on the surface of mm -hmm. the planet, if that makes sense. But you have early Earth. So that's how early Earth was formed. If you go to existence, how and why, um, or if you go back to science of creation, which is actually referencing existence, how and why, if I'm correct. Um, and again, when you go back to read science of creations in the older school or in an older school of thought, it's important if, you're ever, if you ever go back to read books from previous schools that you remember Baba Yanun was speaking from a different perspective. So don't get caught up on the perspective because we're in the hereafter now. So I just always think it's important to point it out. But if you go back to Science of Creation or you talk about it or you, or you read Existence, How and Why, Baba speaks about early Earth having what he calls life gases, if that makes sense. So gases that would come together to form compounds or compound gases, primarily being methane or methane and ammonia. Okay, now methane, one of the early gases which are crucial actually, I'll just mention quickly, is carbon, where carbon based life forms. What number is carbon on the periodic table? Number six, correct? Mm -hmm. See, and, and this, and again, we'll perhaps go into this, but when you talk about even up to the modern day religions, the sixth day of creation, Adam was formed, right? This was symbolic of the fact that carbon, the sixth element, was so crucial in the formation of life on this planet if that makes sense right. so again a story that's morphed and changed sometimes deliberately sometimes accidentally to eventually become adam being created from mud and on the sixth day so on and so forth it was really the indication of how crucial the sixth element was which is really if you like the the element of life as as it pertains to the beings on this planet if that makes sense so you had these early gases methane ammonia and what would have happened is that, again, you also have the presence of water, which in itself is a compound as well. These gases, once the, the orb began to cool, eventually these gases, which would have, would have been floating, would have sunk and come to meet the water. And the combination of that meeting combined with the ultraviolet rays hitting them from the sun would have created a spark, which would have sparked the natural growth of what we call organic life. So you would have had organic molecules which began to form in the waters as a result of this mixture of elements, if that makes sense. And these molecules eventually grew on to become proteins, which eventually grew on to become your single-celled 
organisms or your early life organisms. Some of your early life organisms might be uh, bacteria, algae, fungi, onto your protozoans, which are really your first form of what they'll term as animal life, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So this life naturally grew. Now, you have a couple of different things. This is why I say you have different pathways, because whilst you would have the natural gases of earth present on the on the orb which which interact with other elements on the orb in com in combination with the sun begin to grow what we term as life you also have the opportunity for other objects from outside the orb to bring in ingredients of life hence panspermia which is the idea that the ingredients for life really travel throughout the universe or so on or the solar system so on and so forth until they hit a planet so whether that's a comet or a meteorite so on and so forth this is a natural fact the meteorite the ben ben stone which is the kaaba that i mentioned that the muslims worship that carried amino acids to the planet so you have different that's why i say there's different pathways if that makes sense it's not just one moment which created all life yeah if that makes sense so you would have had that naturally occurring life you would have had meteorites bring you might have had um, aliens come and bring their own ingredients, different forms, different ways in which this life grew. But that's essentially an idea of how plant life and animal life, because as we know, if we look at bacteria, one thing Baba Yanun speaks about actually in, in the book is that bacteria, these, these early forms of life had to be able to survive extreme conditions because the earth would have been extreme at that stage. And if you look at bacteria, you see that they're everywhere, right? Both good and bad, because sometimes bacteria, the word gets a negative connotation. Yeah. Like they're just causing problems. But there's good bacteria as well. <laughs> bacteria that help us digest our food, bacteria that help us in the environment, so on and so forth. So there's good and bad bacteria. And you see, you find them everywhere. Whether it's in the soil, whether it's in the water, whether it's in the air, whether it's on your kitchen counter, hopefully not, if you're cleaning up. But well, you can never kill 100% of bacteria. That's what they we? say, That's right? what the adverts kills 99.9% .9 there you go. of bacteria. I got, I got silly bang in my head. <laughs> Bang, and the, and the dirt, dirt is, is gone. gone. Yeah, but not all the dirt. <laughs> there you go. Because bacteria are so adaptive and so difficult to kill completely. And this is why they would have formed as an early form of life. Same with algae, which I think even to this day will account for most of the photosynthesis that we see on the planet, if that makes sense. These early forms, endurance is, mm -hmm. was a natural characteristic of these early forms of life. Similar to us in our early form because of this special substance they call melanin, we are able to endure, or certainly were able to endure and will again be able to endure extreme conditions, all right? So that is an example of how your natural plant and animal life would have formed. It would have, would have first formed in the water. Water would have started off as single-celled organisms. For many years, it would have been this form of life until eventually these cells start to come together and like, hey, we can work together to form different forms of life. Then you get your multicellular organisms. That life from the water eventually comes out onto the land and you have all these different types of animals and plants manifesting, if that makes sense. And sometimes they come out onto the land, go back. Remember, changes happening over millions of years, come out of the waters onto the land, maybe go back into the waters, so on and so forth. And this is evidenced by when you study um, some of these animals, you will see evidence, whether it's in their skeletal structure, that if they're in the sea, there's evidence that, oh, perhaps they previously were made to be on land mm -hmm. and vice versa, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So life would have naturally grown. Now, to, to, to come to your point, the important distinction between animal life and plant life, if you like, and us as the first world people, and, and it's not to diminish animal life or plant life. All life has its value. The distinction or the main difference between these two dif these two forms of life, if you like, is the presence of a divine essence that we have, if that makes sense. And when I say divine essence, I want us to see that from a cultural perspective and a scientific perspective rather than a spooky religious perspective. The divine essence I'm talking about is the divine DNA of those beings who seeded us on this planet. So these beings that came from Saha, Orion star constellation or Sabatat, Sirius star constellation and seeded us on this planet in the waters originally would have put placed their own DNA amongst that seeding, if that makes sense. So we are literally their children in the same way that you as an individual exemplify your mother and father. It's the same way that we as a people represent our 
overseers or our watchers or our gods or angels, whatever terms you want to use, if that makes sense. So we have that divine DNA within us, which is what separates us, if you like, and gives us that divine essence that we hold. And, and that's to this day, they know that in the human family, you have 223 genes, which have no predecessors on the evolutionary scale. What that means to say is that there's genes there and they're like, we don't know where these genes came from. Mm -hmm. they come up with their different reasons or it could be this it could be that but they don't know where these genes came from Baba Yanon explained now these genes are extraterrestrial that's where they came from they come from outside the planet because there are other beings involved in our creation so that's if you like the difference between us and those forms of life is the fact that their DNA was placed which is why we look like them which is why when I spoke oh, I can't remember when it was a few episodes ago I spoke of the fact that when you have a God which looks like you, that's both psychologically correct and uh, scientifically correct. Because literally, yes, we must, if we're going to worship, worship that which looks like us so that we can envision ourselves as that God-like being or as that greatness. And also scientifically, we have the DNA within us of these beings who seeded us, if that makes sense. So maybe we'll throw out some depictions of these Nataru, which later became the Tiru beings who seeded us in the waters and grew us into the form that we are today eventually obviously since they originally seeded us we've been through many changes changes that we probably wouldn't have asked for and, and certainly the Nefaru wouldn't have wanted necessarily for us if that makes sense but that's what would have happened and and so we were seeded with that divine DNA and that divine DNA remains in us which is why the same way that you are connected to your parent or grandparents, whether they're on this side of existence or the other, it's the same way that we as a species or a race or a tribe or a nation, whatever word you want to use, are connected to our parents, whether on this side of existence or the other, which is where the whole concept of praying comes from, if that makes sense. You're connected to these beings. So if you tune into the DNA that's within you and, and make sure you're on the right frequency, you can contact these beings or contact your creators, if that makes sense, or your seeders. So yeah, that provides a little picture, hopefully, in terms of how life grew on earth. And we were seeded to grow naturally as well, but we have the presence of that divine DNA, which is where we are, what we are, if that makes sense. So hope that. Yeah, <laughs> that fully, fully covers that. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, it's very interesting for me. I think a further episode should be going through the seeding and creation of each race. Yeah. <laughs> bit by bit. Bit by bit, yeah. Some detail there. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, we're going to we'll, get to we'll that. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll definitely get to that. But, um, okay. My mind's working now. My mm. mind's working. That's good. <laughs> let's, let's work our minds. Let's work our minds. Let's do it. Okay, let me think. There was a few things that stood out to me. Mm. Um. I like the way you broke down that's um, the science behind prayer. Right. Because indeed, as you've broke down, vibration can transcend the realms. Exactly. Vibration so if you know free. what you're doing, you can contact exactly. that which is not on this side of its existence. Exactly. Exactly. It's important we know that. That, that. that ability was literally programmed into us, which is why you have these all these different ancient cultures. They can't have all had it wrong. That of trying to make contact or giving reverence to something outside, if you like, the planet is because literally that's how we were seeded. And that's just how it is, if that makes sense. So yeah, hopefully we hopefully we understand that and we start to remove we start to remove some of the spookism around prayer, if that makes sense. Exactly that. So I mean earlier you mentioned different cultures mm. acknowledge or pray to different gods due to these extraterrestrial interceptions right okay so what i wanted to get into is can we find reference within these different cultures of them um acknowledging these beings as extraterrestrial oh yeah most definitely most definitely we can yeah go through various cultures and it's, it's all about interpretations now isn't it in this modern world things have been taken and interpreted in a different way but if you go through various cultures whether we go back to ancient africans or ancient egyptians you look at certain hieroglyphics and you could see there was certain, one on one side there seemed to be indication that there was what would be termed by modern people as advanced technology and also 
otherworldly contact, if that makes sense. If you look at the culture, you have structures which line up with celestial bodies light years away from the planet, such as, as I always mentioned, the Pyramids of Giza, but also the Nabta player, lining up with Orion star constellation. An indication, as I mentioned, our ancestors came from Orion and Sirius, an indication of that connection, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. No coincidence. And um, certainly you would have to have some serious knowledge in order to do it, if that makes sense. So you have the ancient Africans or the ancient Egyptians. The Hindus would have, um, if you go into Hindu stories, they would have had the Vimanas, which are advanced flying objects, look very much like crafts, if that makes sense. And there's stories there of contact with otherworldly beings or beings coming down, if that makes sense. The Dogon tribe of West Africa, Mali, which would have spoken... Um, and it's interesting, the Dogon tribe, right? Because they have advanced knowledge on the Sirius star system. And they have uh, practices which revolve around the movement of the of the Sirius star system, if that makes sense. And they have knowledge. This is knowledge that when you deal with modern, um, the modern world, they didn't have a decent picture of this star system until the 70s. Whereas the Dogons going back have always had this knowledge. So the question's asked and still hasn't been answered by, by them, if mm -hmm. that makes sense, by the Westerns as to how this Dogon tribe could have such knowledge on this star system if they didn't have contact <laughs> contact with the beings who came from the star system. So the Dogon tribe speak of contact with beings from the Sirius star system and certain practices. You hear terms like the Nomos, if that makes sense. So you can find um, uh, reference there to interactions with extraterrestrials, if that makes sense. The um, Aztecs and Mayans will have similar stories of contact with otherworldly beings. So you do some research into that. And obviously the Sumerian doctrine, right? Which speaks of the Anunnaki coming from elsewhere and being responsible for creations that have taken place on this planet. And we know from the Sumerian tablets is where is how we have our modern day religions. If that makes sense, whether, when we're talking about free modern the three main modern day religions, if that makes sense, which is why when you go through these so-called holy scriptures, because they're an amalgamation of Sumerian doctrine, maybe taking some of the African doctrine, everything comes in some way from the um, African culture, original African culture anyway, taken from there, taken from there as well. Because it's such a mishmash, when you read the book, if you read it with the correct eye, you will see evidence of extraterrestrial activity, whether it's Elijah being taken up in a, but in a whirlwind, mm -hmm. I think that's in uh, Second Kings too, if that makes sense. Or Ezekiel, which describes a, a craft, a, a wheel within a wheel, if that makes sense, a craft-like object. To the fact that you have certain constellations mentioned in the Bible, whether it's Orion, as I mentioned, I've mentioned Orion already, Sirius, Pleiades, which we know ties into the fact that the Pleiadians are involved in that particular creation story. Um, and therefore, given you, if you read all these different scriptures or these different accounts, you see that these different cultures, even the modern day religions, even though you have people within the religion who swear it's not that, and then other people in the religion who have depictions of God literally appearing as a craft in the sky, if that makes sense. So there's different things going on. They'll swear it's not that. But when you read the book, you say, oh, this seems like extraterrestrial activity there is contact certainly with a being remember when we deal with the word extraterrestrial as i mentioned i think i said last week extraterra astral something extra on earth that came from the stars so any contact with a being outside of this planet technically is extraterrestrial contact mm -hmm. they'll admit to this in a way but they speak of it being a god right a supreme deity that comes down from the heavens but the mere fact that he comes down from somewhere means he's not this omnipresent God that you speak of. He comes down to see things. He comes down to do this, if that makes sense. And that's separate to the fact that he has characteristics which would uh, you wouldn't expect of a supreme deity, would you? Characteristics like jealousy. Worship none other but me. I'm the best God. <laughs> Apparently the only God, but the best God. So worship, what, what, yeah. what are we saying here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are we saying here, if that makes sense? Um, regret. Creating a, <laughs> creating a whole group of people and then like, oh, no, I don't like these guys. <laughs> Despite the fact I created them in my image and my likeness. He looked upon man and he regretted what he saw, this being. So when you, you look at certain characteristics, you begin to see, no, this isn't an all-powerful supreme deity. These are a group of beings, hence terms like Elohim, Alihat, 
These are plural terms. These are a group of beings responsible for certain creations that took place on the planet, if that makes sense. And if you read the books, and again, as I said, go throughout different cultures, you'll see reference to these different extraterrestrial beings. And it's an important point to make because again, we have to despookify. <laughs> I just created a word. <laughs> We have to get the spookism. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm going with it. We have to get the spookism out of it, if that makes sense. And and reverence to these beings as though they're some all-powerful deities is incorrect. These are advanced in in a lot of ways, no doubt. Beings who who seeded or created or grafted, if that makes sense. And we give reverence to us, to our own creators. As African beings, or Afafare Kau, we give reverence or respect to Parnathalu or the Natiru, if that makes sense, which are really that original nine etheric being or nine etheric creators who seeded us in the waters of the planet. And then when you go back, go down the cultures, you'll see reverence to different sets of beings, which, I, as I mentioned, is, is just pertinent because it means that there were different beings who came at different times. So each race has their own overseers onto the latest creation, if that makes sense, which the Anunnaki and the Pleiadians were involved in. So, so yes, when you go through the cultures, if you if you look at the cultures, certainly you go back to Asian cultures, there's clear indications that there's contact with otherworldly forces, otherworldly beings, extraterrestrial beings, alien life forms, so on and so forth. And when you come to the modern day religions, if you're reading them correctly, then you'll see that there's a lot of extraterrestrial activity going on. And in, in the Bible, we've got a despookify, mm-hmm. it's not an all-powerful so, God. Yeah. To be clear, the three modern day religions would be Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Yes, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. And that's important. Read the books. Read the books. And you just, it's certain terminology. It's like when you start to apply your logical mind, like I always say, faith rubs you of logic, rubs you of the ability to think because you just don't process things. You're just like, no, I just believe. When you start to process things and you read things intelligently, you see, no, okay, something else is going on, um, which is different to what we've been led to believe Mm -hmm. if that makes sense the mere fact that certain think terms are used elohim ali heart so on and so forth the mere fact that um this god speaks of replenishing the earth replenishing (laughs) not plenishing (laughs) replenishing the earth okay the mere fact that when you trace the root of that original creation it's about a recreation or reconstruction if you like is to say that no this was a group of beings that came to the planet i.e the anunnaki and the Pleiadians. So again, that, that that line that we speak about when we speak about image and likeness, right? Image of the Pleiadians, likeness of the Anunnaki, right? Created for different reasons, which again, maybe when we get into the creation of the races, we'll get into the reasons for their creation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and when they came, when they created this modern day uh, Caucasian or started off the creation, because even the Caucasian has gone through different forms, didn't it? not as they appear now is what their original form was when they started that we were already here we had already been seeded long ago and we weren't the only ones already here we were the first in the planet and other races had manifested by the time the the caucasians are the most recent if that makes sense so other races had manifested whether you're talking about the aborigines whether you're talking about the indians whether you're talking about the asians so on and so forth all of these races came before the most recent race which is the caucasian and that was um by way of the Anunnaki and the Palladiums, which is why you can trace the scriptures or the biblical texts, so on and so forth, back to the Sumerian tablets, if that makes sense, which are literally the stories of the Anunnaki. So yes, short answer is yes, you can find reference to extraterrestrials (laughs) throughout these cultures and religions. Yeah, (laughs) it was really quite ridiculous to try and say that the the creation story of 6,000 years was the first Mm. (laughs) And only one. Yeah, yeah. It was, and eventually they realized how ridiculous it was, so they tried to say different things. No, no, it happened over a longer period of time, and no, it was it, it created everyone first, and did it, and different reasons and different stories were coming out. But the bottom line is, yes, we can point back to something happened six thousand years ago, around six thousand years ago, but to suggest that that was the original creation upon the planet, and that that same being was responsible for creating everything. Is, is ludicrous, if that makes sense. And mm-hmm. now we're starting to see when you trace, when you actually read the book and you trace back the ages of the biblical characters, again, most of which, all of which have never been proven to exist. But if you trace back the ages, you see that, okay, this is 6,000 years ago. We've now proven that life existed long before. 
So rather than try to adjust the story to match the reality that we now have to accept, just admit the story ain't right. <laughs> it's not right. And so we need the real story. And this is, this is in particular as it pertains to our people, because that's a particular um, train of thought that we have to get out of, if that makes sense. And we need to get closer and closer to our original form or our original vibration. So yes, yes, you find reference to these extraterrestrials. I advise people to research what I mentioned. Don't just don't just take me on my word. Research what I mentioned. The Dogon one, it was always interesting, right? Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, very have, interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, there you go. So research, have a look. I mean, e even the depictions you see within the Hindu culture, mm. it always struck me. I was like, okay, those are not very human looking. <laughs> right, exactly. There you go. And you had, you had yeah. beings with extra limbs and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, the master broke that all down. He explained that that's why you started to see humanoids manifest with what we would call deformities with these extra limbs. It was really these these uh, characteristics came by way of mixing with beings other than the humans on the planet. Humans tend to have, certainly in our, in our form on land, two legs and two arms. The fact that you see these deformities is evidence that there's been an introduction of foreign DNA, mm -hmm. foreign genes. And this is because the mixture of um, certain extraterrestrials that came down to the Hindu people, if that makes sense. So yeah, you have to, you have to, you know, just science, it's all science. It's all science, but definitely existence, how and why. And if you go back to science of creation, it speaks a lot about this as well. If that makes sense. Is God an extraterrestrial as well for mm -hmm. the previous school? All good books that give us a clear um, picture of what's taken place on the planet, if that makes sense. Leading up to one of my favorite books, and I mentioned it last week, Intelligent Design divine design or plot of aliens very good if that mm. makes sense very good Sorry. very good okay working away for you just just check my notes mm. see if i had any other questions okay let's may have started to cover this but let's let's talk about us as a people right african people right <laughs> nagaru as we would say in our mm. language negroid so what were we in our original form? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, original form is so difficult to say, isn't it? Because we've, we've, we're ever changing and we're ever present. But initially on this planet, we would have been seeded in the waters, so it would have been aquatic, so to speak. Um, uh, Baba Yanun has suggested that there are some of us that still remain in the waters, which is interesting. He's also suggested that there are some versions or some ancient tribes which still haven't been discovered by modern humans so to speak that still exists just haven't been discovered yet if that makes sense but we would it would have existed in the waters until we were until we came onto the land whether by way of natural transition or tsunami so on and so forth we came onto the land and we began to adapt to the land so in terms of our first land humanoid um uh, form if you like he, he takes us back to the sands people if that makes sense. So if you do some research into the Sand Tribe or the Sands Tribe, you'll see that these are an Asian African tribe of which carry the characteristics of most of the races that we see on the planet, which is an, in an indication that these races came from us. Whether you're talking about the epicampic folds of the Orientals, whether you're talking about the brow of the Aborigines or the dimple chin of the Dravidians, when you look at the Sands people, and again, I don't know, maybe we can throw pictures up. I ain't trying to pressure the editor. I'm just saying, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. I'm sure the editor will get it done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you look at the, um, and a tribe that, that you that can, you can and has been visited today, um, you will see that they carry the characteristics and the features of, of different races, other than the multicolored eyes that you see within the Caucasian race, which is an indication, again, that something different, something uh, vastly different happened 6,000 years. It's not to say that they don't, in some way come from us but there is a clear interception there a clear change there which accounts for some of the features that you see or characteristics that you see in that race but the sans people would have been something close to our original form in existence how and why he also speaks of the pygmies or the tribe which are insultantly referred to as the pygmies which is really our original tarhite form we would have been tarhites in our original form which is to say as males we were five foot four tall and as females we were four foot five tall if that makes sense. And this was our original form, um, if you like. And so 
the Sand Stribe, I would look at um, look at books like Intelligent Design, look at books like uh, I think even so I read and um, the Harvest might have some reference to us in there. But essentially, we were in this we were in this form. So if you research the Sand Stribe, which you can, you can just Google them if you want to, um, or in our in our shorter African form, if that makes sense. And at this creation, we were actually perfect in terms of length, height, frequency, so on and so forth, which enabled us to to be so in tune with nature and so in tune with our ancestors, if that makes sense. And he, Papa Yanun will speak of us. There's a lot of variety to us as a species, partly to do with how we, who we are, but partly to do with all the different mixtures that have taken place over the long course of time that we've been on the planet, if that makes sense. So there's various stories of where different beings may have come in and mixed with us or used our genes to try and create other races on the planet so on and so forth and so that is why you see us in so so many different forms today on the planet if you really look at us as a, as a race we come in a lot of different forms we come in a lot of different shades but we all originate and we're all one family if that makes sense but yeah look at the sands people um we started in the waters we were seated in the waters we grew in the waters and eventually we came onto land and if you're talking about our first land humanoid form we would have been the sands people you can look at certain Asian tribes in Africa to get an idea of who or what we we are. Again, you can see that we don't look hugely different now. We've still got that melanin, different parts of the planet. One thing the master mentioned actually is that when you go to different parts of the planet, because we are so subject to our environment, because we're a mixture of nature and nurture, that you do see changes in people, inner people dependent on where they are on the planet so you will see changes whether it's in look slightly or in behavior you will still see changes because you're going through different things and your environment helps program you not just as an individual but as a group of people so if you as a people were taken from africa and placed there there will be differences now obviously in in how you were originally if that makes sense or even if you branched out over there and then went through different experiences there'll be differences now between you and where you originally came from if that makes sense so so yeah i would say in our original form sans people um it says not sound why it's just a great book mm -hmm. it's just a great book to read and so that's what i would point to um if you want to know about us in our original form but yes as i said we've gone through many changes We've gone through many changes. And in terms of the height that we were at or the abilities that we had, we're very far from that state of being, if that makes sense. But such as the time period, we're going back towards that. But if you talk about our original form, we would have originally, when you read Existence, How and Why, I, I was a little depressing because life seemed so good back then. Baba Yanun was describing it. It was like, yeah, man, you guys didn't know death. There was no such thing as death. Everything on yeah. the planet benefited you everything you consumed benefited you you were in tune with nature death didn't exist yet because everything around you was life right and you maintained that until the arrival of other entities so to speak and really that representation of death and he explains in that book of course certain things are inevitable because within life is the possibility of death so within the planet was always the possibility of the death period that we that we've just gone through if that makes sense and so it was inevitable in a sense but life back then was was great we just lived we just lived there was no death you know it's, it's time a real to leave. struggle these days it really is it's a real struggle it's just it's dim it's depressing the food you're consuming it's like it's killing you it's, yeah it's murdering you slowly. ingredients you're just there like <sighs> what do you do what do you do so yeah <laughs> but it wasn't always like that and it won't always be like this if that makes sense, such as the cycle, as we mentioned, of existence, right? We go through different phases, no matter where we are in the universe or multiverse, we go through different phases and, and existence has its different moments um, of what you call life, where you have that thriving period where we were thriving and we were like, yeah, it was on top of our games. And then you had that period in, most recently where we're maybe not thriving as much as we could be. But we will again. <laughs> we will again. We will again. We will again. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think that was solid. Oh, I hope so. Yes. I hope so. So much covered. Mm. So much covered by Baba Yanon and with yeah. our culture and doctrine. Yeah. He's gone into a lot. He's gone into the lot and that's why we've, we've, we've received answers in this um, phase of time that most people 
certainly in recent centuries and on and on, wouldn't have received. And I always say that we're blessed to have the Warner and Reformer in our presence because we really are blessed. We can ask questions, pretty much any questions, and get the answers to them, if that makes sense. And those questions determine what we're next taught. Baba Yanun's always explained that your questions show me where you're at. Our questions decided what he taught. If we ask questions and it's clearer in this frame of mind, he's like, all right, I've got, I got to teach you this so I can pull you out of that. We ask different questions. He's like, all right, you guys are ready for this. Let's go here, if that makes sense. But one thing that is, is to be emphasized is that he was saying long ago, he was telling us long ago about extraterrestrials and their involvement on the planet uh, and their involvement in the creation of different species on the planet and now you're seeing different people start to speak about whether it's Gaia whether it's this history channel whether it's this science channel so on and so forth or speak about the possibility at least and Baba Yanun explained I've been telling you ages ago about this mm -hmm. and not only that it's like it reaches a point where you kind of have to get past it because I can't be telling you forever that extraterrestrials exist because there's so much more to tell you about them and their involvement like we always say step one step, step one. one is acknowledging they exist step one we need to be beyond that. We need to long beyond Because there's that. a lot happening. Stuff that, if you're still stuck in that frame of mind, you're going to struggle to deal with. There's some stuff happening. And and it, and it and it, it really does connect to our story, which is why hopefully we can get into the, to the different stories of the races and explain how each one manifested, if that makes sense. But yeah, we've got to get past it. We've got to get past it. And again... Do your reading, do your research, read the books that I've suggested you read, of course, read other books. There's plenty of reference now to the idea that humanoids are connected in some way to that which is outside the planet. I know Supreme Beings, Melanite Race has come into mind for mm. me as well. I'm yeah. I'm sure there might have been something in there. And Hamseed, the new version. There you go. Goes into a lot. Oh, so, I just got to pop them up. Pop them up. Pop them up, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all these books I mean yeah there's so many books where the Baba Yanon spoken about extraterrestrial involvement but he speaks about it in different levels I remember reading um, It's God and Extraterrestrial and he literally says I can't keep if you if you ain't accepting this I gotta move on mm -hmm. I can't keep trying to convince you that extraterrestrials exist if that makes sense and obviously we live in a world where there is such denial by the powers that be and every so often they hint at something and then they're like no 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 because they understand that they've created a world which is so reliant on the lie that extraterrestrials don't exist, especially when you're looking at religious terms. Mm. And how would the public react <laughs> to the idea that they've been lied to for so long, if that makes sense? But yeah, I remember him saying, yeah, I, I can't keep trying to convince you. I, I just, there's other stuff to tell you. So if you're still at that point, it's difficult to, to graduate beyond that, if that makes sense. So... Yeah, if we, 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 we got, we've, we've said what we've said today, we'll go into the creation of the different races and the different extraterrestrials responsible. I've mentioned a few of them today when it comes to us, Parnadalu. Also then now later on is the Natiru, which has its connection to nature, as we said. When you're dealing with the Caucasians, you have the Anunnaki or the Pleiadians and the different races with their different extraterrestrials. That they yeah, are. which we can go in, in depth. Indeed. In a future episode. And yeah... Left them a lot, a lot. Left them a lot to go research. Also, the the, the sands people. I always forget. Is it sands or sun? Because you naturally want to say sands. But yeah, is yeah. It sand? Yeah, what, I forget. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Actually, I've seen it as both. both to be sands honest. people, sand so people. So either sands or sand. You search or up bushmen of the Kalahari. There you go. There you go. And you'll find them. And you'll find them. And you'll see the characteristics I'm talking about. If that makes sense. Yeah. All of the characteristics that relate to the different races that we see manifest other than the multicolored eyes if that makes sense that we see in the adamites or the caucasians so yeah people can check that out it's, yeah it's going to be interesting to delve into the creation of the races yeah yeah do, but yeah it'll be good yeah i think we'll leave that one there that's fine by me leave that one there we're building. It's like a building block mm. of the story. So I like how we started with the creation of the, the universe. Mm. Now we're on to planet Earth. Right. On to plant, animal and humanoid life. So we'll see what we come with next. Mm. But yeah. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. One thing I'd say before you just end it as well is that I mentioned it as well. But you have to remember that there's different seeding projects as well. So... 
what we can go into next time is what you would call the dolphin project and how we're seeded in the dolphins. And then you might have different ways in which our ancestors seeded us. So hopefully we're going into that. We won't go into it now because I know you're, you're wrapping it up. But I want to mention that as well. Yeah, that was good to mention. Yeah. Yes. So where was I? You were saying Before subscribe. I, really I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. But yes, I would like to thank you all for watching. We will be back next week. Mm. If you haven't already subscribed hit the notification bell so you are notified when we upload new episodes or segments you can catch us on instagram tiktok facebook all them things you <laughs> can catch us on most if not all podcast audio platforms spotify apple etc google and yeah drop a comment in the comment section any questions just anything on your mind and, yeah, we'll see you all next week. But until then, farewell, Wadu. Farewell and Wadu. <laughs>